What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today, we're going to talk about tags and shared variables and how to use those in plugins. So basically, if you're using the web API and you're making web API calls, you may want to pass through a custom value that can be received uh, in plugins through the web API call, okay? So um, I wrote a blog about this. Uh, the this, this is the link on the screen here, and I'll throw it down in the description as well. And, uh, you know, a super simple example of this is like, let's say you only want to do certain things when you make a web API call, uh, if the call is made from like a certain area, right? So if you're on a particular application that you built, and you're making web API calls, you may want to pass through a uh, custom value that says, hey, I'm on this particular application. And then when it uh, when the Web API call hits the plugin, then you can perform specific business logic before you send back the data to the Web API, right? So that's just like a super simple example. But there's so many things you can do uh, if you're passing through your own base, your own custom variables, basically, right? Custom variables, custom values. So we're going to look at how to achieve this with the Web API, and we'll we'll, we'll go through an example and we'll see actually how this looks when it comes through into the plugin. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna head over to this tab here and we're gonna make a web API call. And um, you can see here that, that this is a standard web API call that I'm making through the browser. And so it's in uh, slash API slash data slash V9.2. And I'm basically retrieving all contacts, right? So so this part here is is very standard. But now let's say that I wanted to pass this tag along so that uh, I can get this custom value appearing in my plugins, then this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna basically just say uh, question mark tag equals and then the value here, right? Uh, and I'm gonna show a little bit later how to make this a bit more complicated but uh, so that we can actually pass name value pairs as well. But this is just a simple example of just one value, right? So we're just passing in hello world. And so if I were to run this, um, we're just gonna see the web API call run and it's gonna it's doing the retrieve multiple on contacts and then it's just gonna return the contact still. So there's no difference here that you're gonna see at this side now, right? But the, the magic all happens in the back end when we start talking plugins. So what I've done is, let me jump over here to Visual Studio. I've created a project here that is basically three plugins, and these plugins are going to run in the sequential order of the uh, pre-validation, pre-operation, and then post-operation, right? So if you're familiar with the plugin execution context, these are the three stages that run in a plugin that we have access to as developers. And uh, so, so let's start with the pre-validation. So what's happening here is, uh, we are basically saying when the pre-validation runs on contacts for the uh, retrieve multiple service, we are going to basically just uh, write out to the trace uh, that we're in the pre-validation. Okay, so we'll see all of these appearing in the plugin trace log. And then we're going to look at the shared variables here, right? So within the execution context, we have shared variables. And if you're not familiar with shared variables, these are really cool things because what, what shared variables can do is you can basically pass information between these different stages of the plugins, right? So this is actually uh, independent of the tag that we're using in the, with the Web API, but it's used by the tag in the Web API, okay? So if you were not making any tag Web API calls, you could still utilize these shared variables here. And you can basically say like, you know, you could create a variable in the pre, in the pre-validation and then that same variable will show up in the pre-operation and in the post-operation, okay? So you're basically passing variables and values through each of the stages of the plugin execution uh, cycle, okay? So, so shared variables are very cool. And basically Microsoft utilizes the shared variables for the tag web API calls. So uh, basically, what you're gonna end up with with the tag is you'll have, it'll look like this. It'll basically be a tag shared variable, okay? And here we're just basically printing out the value of that of that variable, okay? Um, so that's all I'm doing there. And then here we have, 
I'm just basically looping through all of the shared variable values just to kind of print them out and see what else we have in there. And then I'm also doing a, uh, I'm actually adding another new shared variable here, uh, my own one that's called new shared variable. And it is a, uh, just assigning the value at, as test. Okay. And then I'm just basically printing that out to the, to the, uh, trace log here, the plugin trace log, right? So that's all that we're doing here. So, so basically, you know, so, so just to rewind what I want to do with the pre-validation is I want to show the, the tag appearing here in the plugin, right? Um, so that's pre-validation and then pre-operation, what we're going to do something very similar. We're just going to print out that we're in the pre-operation. Then we're going to print out the, the tag here because I want to make sure, um, or I, I kind of want to show you guys that it's appearing, the tag from the web API call is appearing all three of these stages, right? So we're going to print it out there as well. Then we're going to print out all the values here uh, in the uh, shared variables. And then down here, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that new shared variable that we created in the pre-validation and I'm going to update the value to, to test two, just to show you that that can be done. And then, uh, and then I'll print that out here. Okay. So then the final post operation stage here. So the post operation, basically printing out the trace post operation. And then we have the, the, we're going to print out the tag again, make sure we still have the tag intact and it's accessible at this stage. And then, uh, same deal. We're printing out the values. And then the final thing we're doing here is we will print out the new shared variable value. And because I've incremented it here, or I've basically updated the value to test two, we should see a test two appearing in the post operation, right? So it's, it's just an example again of being able to pass variables between these stages of the pipeline. So really, really uh, kind of useful functionality I find. So, and then I'm just going to um, kind of, you know, if you think about a real world example here, so in the retrieve multiples, uh, you know, what people do quite often is they override the queries in these multi retrieve multiple uh, native queries. So let's say um, you are, so in, in my case, what I'm doing is I'm returning all contacts, right? But let's say that you wanted to restrict the uh returning all contacts and you only wanted to return contacts from a particular city, let's say, right? So there's, there's obviously easier ways to do that, but, um, but, but for the purpose of this exercise, what you could do is you could basically come in here and say, let's look at the shared variables that was passed in. If the tag is equal to city name, then we could, uh, override the retrieve multiple query to add a filter to only return uh, uh, contacts from a particular city. And then what will happen is once this, uh, this operation is complete, it will then basically on the web API response, it'll actually just filter out to just those cities, right? So that's just a kind of an example of, of uh, how you may want to use the tags. You could also uh, you know, perform certain business logic that's not related to the retrieve multiple, right? You could basically say, oh, that, you know, there's a certain condition in the tag or a certain value in the tag that's coming in. Let's go off and do, let's maybe update another system, you know, for example, and then we'll let the retrieve multiple complete. So those are the three uh, stages there. And then if I head over to the uh, plugin registration tool, uh, here is my assembly that's been registered and I have the three steps here. So these are the three steps that have been registered on each of the uh, three above here. And so that's pretty simple. So let's go, let's go give this a shot. So what I'm going to do is we go back over here to the, uh, to the web API call. So if I run this web API call, we'll just let that go ahead and run. So now what I'm going to do is go over to advanced find over here in this tab, and I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this. And, and basically these are the, uh, the, the three stages that we are logging out here to the to the uh, plugin trace log. And you can see here, like this is the first uh, pre-validation that we ran. So if we just go ahead and open this up and take a look at it, and if we scroll down a little bit, what we can see here is, is here is the uh, output from our plugin, okay? So we can see we're in the pre-validation, 
The tag is hello world. So that's great. So that's the tag, right? So we're getting that value coming in here. And then here are the values. And uh, the, the first one's false. That's actually another uh, shared variable that's not part of what we're doing. So that's what we're seeing there. And then this is the second one, the tag one, hello world. And then here we have the new shared variable test here, right? So that's the, the one that we created ourselves manually, right? So now if we head over to the second one, the pre-operation, we're doing something pretty similar. So we could see here that uh, the tag's still present and the values are uh, these two. So it's the same values. And then uh, this is test. So this was the sh original shared variable. And then we updated it to test two. And I just printed it out here, but at this stage, we want to see if test two is going to appear in the post operation. So if I close this down and go to the post operation, let's go take a look. And we could see here that now test two is being printed out, okay? And we still get access to the to the tag here and then the values, right? So that's all, uh, that's really useful, I think, being able to utilize this tag. Uh, let's go and close this down. And what I'm gonna do now is show you how to get uh, additional values in here. So what we could do here, if I delete out that one, so here is an example where you could see, uh, I'm actually passing in a JSON object here, right? So all I've done is just put this into the URL here and we have the name. So we have a name field and the values John, we have an age field, the values 30, we have a car field, the values null, right? So if I just go and run this, uh, just like we were doing with the hello world. And then we head over to advanced find and we just go and refresh this. If we go and open up the uh, pre-validation here, we'll see that the, the values now come through like this, right? So that's awesome because what, we, what this means is that we can take this and this is JSON and then we can just create our own variables uh, based on this here, right? So now we're, we're, we actually know the, the variable name that's coming in and we know its value and we can pass in multiple of these, right? So that's a pretty cool way of, of doing that. So last thing, let's just go and take a look at how this looks in the plugin uh, in, in Visual Studio. I'm gonna go head back over to Visual Studio down here and let's just go and wire this up to uh, the plugin registration tool and I'll put a breakpoint on here and then we can see this working here. So if I go to the plugin registration tool, attach that to the process there and just do some really standard debugging. And I'm gonna do this on pre-validation. So let's go and add a breakpoint in here. And uh, I already have a test ready to go. So let me go and open that up here. So back over here, if I go to the pre-validation step and we will debug, let's choose our image here and there's the assembly. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and click start execution. So here we are in the code. And if we just go ahead and step, and then we can see here the shared variables. If we go and take a look at the values, if we go to keys, we'll see here, uh, the second one's the one we're interested in. That's the tag, right? So now if we go over to values and find this corresponding one, we have the hello world there, right? So that's what we're passing in. And that's what it looks like from that side. And then if we go and take a look at the shared variables, we'll see we now we have a count of three. We have three keys. Second index here is new shared variable. And if we go to values, there's our value test, right? Um, and I found that it's, uh, it, it's not really possible to overwrite the value off the, the tag one. So if you try to put something else in here at this point inside the plugin to change this value, uh, I didn't have much luck doing it. Maybe you will, but I, I think that it doesn't really matter anyway, because if you wanted to utilize whatever's here, you could put that into your own shared variable value, and then you could uh, update that value, right? So so that's something that I just found, no big deal. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how this all works. Hope you guys enjoyed, and hopefully you'll be able to implement this in your code. So that's it guys, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.